Howdy, this is Tubal Cain again. Before I get started on this video, let me just say that uh, I've been in contact with a man by the name of Clint Holmes. He's down in Pensacola, Florida, and he has a automotive type machine shop called Nine Mile Machine Shop. And he has several videos on YouTube you might want to check out. They're real good, and you can look up Clint Machinist, two words. Also, if you're ever in Pensacola, and I was there very recently, be sure and go to that Naval Museum, but allow a full day or two there. I only had three or four hours, and it was not nearly enough. It is fantastic. The subject of this video will be splitting a hair on the Atlas lathe. And in my little stirret micrometer here, I have one of my uh, hairs, one of the few that isn't already gray. But uh, the average hair is going to measure anywhere between one and two thousandths. Mine is about one and a half thousandths. Uh, a baby's hair or a blonde hair is usually around one thousandth. And uh, coarser black hairs may be uh, two or three thousandths. But it's going to vary a little bit. But anyway, just uh, I'm doing this just to explain how really uh, small a thousandth of an inch is. And that we sometimes need to machine to less than a thousand of an inch or really half a hair or less or some people used to say we need to split a gnat's hair. Let's step over to the atlas lathe and talk about it. If you've done much machining at all I'm sure you've experienced the heartbreak of ruining your work when you have only one or two thousandths left to go and and you try to take off that one thousandth and all of a sudden you took off too much and your undersize and the work is spoiled and sometimes you have a tight tolerance where you you have to have uh, work at a certain size and you can't go under so uh, part of the problem is that uh, we do all of our feeding normally with the cross feed on a lathe as far as the depth of cut is concerned and sometimes it's just very difficult to, to feed in only one thousandth of an inch and, and it may appear that you are feeding in one thousandth but Whatever reason there is, you take off more than that. But uh, an alternate way of doing that is to feed in with the compound set at an angle. And I'm going to give you a couple variations of that in a second. But first let me say that on the Atlas Craftsman lathe, we have what I call direct reading dials. That is, if you feed in ten thousandths let's say the cross feed or the tool is actually moving in ten thousandths but the reality is you are removing twenty thousandths or double the amount my closing lathe does not work that way it has what I call actual dials let me review that again on the atlas lathe we have direct reading dials so if you feed in ten thousandths, you're going to remove twenty thousandths of material from the stock because in fact you're taking ten thousandths off of each side. Now if you're not sure what kind of dials uh, your lathe has, you take some trial cuts and write this down so you can remember it. If you have more than one lathe, you may have two different kinds of dials. So you need to remember that. That's why I even have written that down directly on my machine, my machine because sometimes I forget. Now here's one solution to the problem. I have the compound set at 30 degrees but actually the reading for that when I uh, read it over on the other side on the protractor is going to be 60 degrees but we are 30 degrees from uh, the axis of the bed or we are 30 degrees off of perpendicular to the chuck. Lathes will vary on that setting, that's why I'm trying to make this point, but anyway, we're, we're 30 degrees. But if you set your compound at 30 degrees, you will have a 2 to 1 ratio as you feed in for using this for the depth of cut. So in other words, now if you feed in 1,000th, you're only taking off a half thousandth. Now take into consideration the direct dials we talked about too, but I don't want that to confuse the situation. Or if you feed this in ten thousandths, you'll actually be going in toward the work or the depth of cut 
of five thousandths. Now I'm going to show you another way of doing this that's even finer in a minute, but first let's talk about this again. 30 degrees will give you a 2 to 1 ratio. Now I want to set the camera up in a different position and uh, prove this to you with an indicator. Now let's take a look at this setup for that 2 to 1 ratio that I just talked about. The protractor on the compound is set at 60 degrees. Now you need to wipe that off good with a rag and get in there with a little flashlight and a magnifying glass in order to set that. Now I put my 3060 uh, triangle here from a drafting class from when I was in junior college to indicate to you that we truly are at, uh, at 30 degrees here but that the compound has to be set at 60. So it, it depends on what you call the zero point. But we are at 30 degrees. Now I made this little temporary platform here to set uh, the indicator on so I'm going to do that and show to you exactly uh, how this works and prove it to you. On this setup with my Loris tool post, the tool post uh, must be perfectly uh, square with the chuck or this surface here must be uh, on the axis of the machine however you want to say it. So taking a precision square and putting it up against the face of the chuck I have checked to see that this is square. Now in some cases, like uh, Keith Fenner just runs this right up against and touches it onto the, the, the chuck, and you can do that also. But uh, he has very large machinery with a large chuck, and there's a, there's a lot of working space in here, but there isn't quite enough room to get this uh, uh, loris in there up against there to prove that you're, you know, you're square. That's why I'm using a combination square. Normally I use a last word indicator, but in this case I'm using this federal indicator that has a larger diameter face on it. And uh, it is in half thousands rather than in thousands, so I think this is better to, to show you. Also it has a real long pointer on there, and I've got that set for uh, at about 90 degrees. This uh, tip can bend down, so I got it in that position. It's being held in the little stirrup magnetic holder here. I got two of those, but uh, this is the one that I'm using. And I know there's a terrible glare and it's hard to see the needle. But that's how the setup is, uh, is going here. Now when I move the uh, compound across there, it needs to slide and that's why this needed to be squared up. The Aloris needed to be squared up so I don't get uh, a false reading. All right, now let's try this. I've got the compound collar set at exactly zero degrees, and I have removed all backlash. Now, if you don't know what backlash is, go ahead and look at one of my other videos, but uh, you must not have any backlash. And then I've got the uh, test indicator up against the, the Aloris tool post here. I'm going to move ten thousandths in with the compound, and you will see that the indicator will only move five thousandths. Try to close in on that a little bit. Now watch the indicator. That's ten thousandths on the compound and I've moved in in reality five thousandths for my depth of cut. So if you set your compound at 30, you got a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's a pretty good uh, place to set it. But if you want to go with tenths of a thousandths, I'm going to show you that too. If it's too much for you, the video is over. Otherwise, stand by and we will work on tenths of a thousandth. If you want to advance the tool by the tenth of a thousandth into the work, as far as the depth of the cut is concerned, this is the setup that is required. And this is particularly good when you're using your tool post grinder where you really want to uh, advance the grinding wheels very slowly into the work. So we are at, uh, as far as the compound is concerned, 
five and three quarters. So uh, we have to set it at 84 and a quarter. Now you can't see a quarter. It's just impossible. So let's just call it six degrees. So I'm six degrees off of the axis of the machine. Now when I feed in ten thousandths with the compound, the tool or the grinding wheel is actually going to advance into the work only a tenth of a thousandth. So this is really a good way to, to set it up if you want uh, maximum control. Again, make sure you have no backlash. This uh, setup may interfere with the tailstock if you're doing uh, work between centers, so it may not work for uh, work being held between centers. But there are still going to be many applications for it, so let's prove this again with the test indicator. I will now feed the compound dial in 50 thousandths. Now that's half of a revolution. And with the 10 to 1 ratio, the indicator will only show 5 thousandths. Let me zoom a little bit in on that, and then I've got a little uh, uh, shade over this to try to cut the glare. Now I'm feeding in 50 thousandths. Watch that indicator. And you can see that I've actually advanced the tool in, or the grind wheel in, only five thousandths. So if you want real accurate control over the depth of cut, use this setup. And again, look at this and write this down if you need to. It's uh, five and three quarters degrees. And remember that the other one, for a two-to-one ratio, is 30 degrees. And that, gentlemen, is how to split a hair. And the hair is still in the micrometer, if you can probably not, cannot see it. And I hope this was helpful for your uh, very fine work and your fine depths of cut. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.